This podcast is part of the Deluxe Edition Network. To find other great shows on the network, head over to deluxeeditionnetwork.com. That's deluxeeditionnetwork.com. Hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome back to Flet's Movies and Pop Culture 13, where we discuss all movies. I'm your host, Kyle Curtis Flett, part of DeluxeRisonNetwork.com. I wish out the two podcasts, my Real Drunks Podcast and Horse Round. They're both on Spotify. They're, go check them out. They do an awesome job. Today, I'm interviewing a very special guest. You all know him as Officer Doof- Doofy from Scary Movie and Dylan and Victor Crowley and Sheriff Wilmore and Bloody Summer Camp and so much more. The one and only Dave Sheridan. How are you doing, man? Hello. What's going on? How are you, man? Doing good. And how are you doing? I'm doing great today. Thank you for having me. Yeah, you're welcome. And thanks to you for being here. I've been a huge fan of yours and finally get to meet you. This is so cool. So Awesome. Where are you out of, Kurt? Oh, I'm in Alberta, Canada. Okay. I have no idea where that is. It's in Alberta, though. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was just in London, Ontario. I don't know if that's close to Alberta. Um, that's a couple of pro- not that far. That's a couple of provinces from me, but yeah. So yeah. is Calgary closer to Alberta? Yeah, uh, yeah, Calgary's in Alberta. Yeah. Okay, got it. Because I know there's a a pretty cool horror convention in Calgary. I haven't been to. I'd love to go out to that one sometime. Yeah, I was supposed to go to that one last year. I didn't, but things happen, so I didn't end up going to there. So. Yep, I hear you. Yeah. So. Say hi to hi. Say hi to the chat. Hey, Andrew. Andrew is in the house. Sarah. Sarah. I can read. I can read. And Rosie Just says, "Don't disturb my room. I won't. <laughs> Definitely won't disturb you." Definitely won't disturb you. Hey, what, what's up, Lamont? Right. So, what are we live on Facebook or something? Oh, we're live on YouTube. YouTube. All right, that's kind of cool. Yeah, I'll have to check that out. I've heard of YouTube. Hello, Kyle and Dave. Hey, Peter. But I think I called you Kurt. <laughs> That's okay. No worries. Now it's Kyle. Yeah. Hey, Brother mm-hmm. Fluff. Brother Fluff. I don't know. We were letting Brother Fluff in here. Oh, yeah. geez. It's going to get crazy if you let Uh-oh. him in here. Oh, boy. Brother <laughs> so, Fluff. So my first question to you, what was it like being an intern on uh, Star Night Live? Well, it was my second job I because I started out at uh, CBS News with Dan Rather and actually I started out with Paula Zahn and I got fired after a week with her and then they put me at Dan Rather's desk and then about three weeks later I was working at Saturday Night Live because like I wasn't I had no interest in being a journalist I wanted to be a comedian so um, it was great it was a good time I got to meet I was there a really good year speaking of Canada because um, it was the year that we put out Wayne's World uh, with Mike Myers and uh, Dana Carvey, which was, you know, supposedly based in Canada, the characters in the story. So uh, in that year was Kevin Nealon was on the news desk, you know, Chris Farley, Adam Sandler, Chris Rock, Rob Schneider were like, you know, some of the actors on the show and stuff like that. So it was I, I had a ball. It was great. It's a good learning experience for sure. And it literally led me to, understanding and getting a job at second city in chicago and from second city then i went and sold a show to mtv which was viacom in america and uh i moved to los angeles to produce and shoot that show even though we traveled around the country we were based out of los angeles so because saturday night live was in new york so i I didn't want to go back to new york i went to new york from chicago to chicago to los angeles and i'm still out in california today unless i get to hawaii that's the next move i just want to keep moving west just keep moving west eh yeah why not right eh? yeah eh? <laughs> you hoser. Um, come on that, you hoser. that is that is awesome and so you and you also created buzzkill what was like yep. creating that show and doing that tv series well see that show was 
uh, it came out of a show called Dave Sheridan's America, which is the show that I was doing while I was at Second City in Chicago. And Second City actually produced that show called Dave Sheridan's America, which was in all essence buzzkill. When MTV bought Dave Sheridan's America, they waited, they put me on ice, no pun intended, um, being up there in Canada, but they, they kind of froze me for about seven months until my contract ended with Second City so we could take Dave Sheridan's America and turn it into um, Buzzkill. So it was a lot, I, you know, to be 23 years old and driving a van around the country and, you know, shooting and directing my own TV show and producing it and editing it. And back in early 1990s, it was 94 probably at that point, 93, 94. And um, I just, you know, it was pretty cool. We worked on, uh, what was the system? It was an Amiga 3000. It was a video toaster. That's what we edited. Uh, we tried Premiere, early Premiere. We tried to work with that on a, on a Mac and we were getting too many drop frames. And then we found that the uh, the toaster, the video toaster, along with Lightwave with an Amiga 3000, which is all essence a Commodore computer in America. But when Commodore went out of business here, but in Europe, they still made the Commodores called Amigas. So, which is a pretty powerful computer for that back then. So, and we, we, we took those with us. We took those computers with us and we edited the, our show on the road back then. So it was pretty cool. That's awesome. So then later on, you, you got into one of my favorite movies, parodies of all time, a scary movie. Um, yep. What was it like being directed and work with the Wayne brothers? And what was some of your favorite scenes uh, as Doofy? Well, I would say it's kind of fitting. I'm really blessed just to have my first movie out of the gate, A, be a hit, but also be a spoof or be a comedy because, I mean, outside of like, you know, the Pink Panther movies, those spoof movies, whether it was the airplane movies or Amazon Women on the Moon or Kentucky Fried movie, um, you know, basically all those things were very similar to Saturday Night Live. They were just sketches and stuff like that, a series of funny sketches just into an elongated movie form. And that's what Scary Movie was. But the good news was for me to actually be in at least an old school comedy like that at the turn of the millennium, which was 2000, you know, not knowing that in eight years, the probably comedies are completely dead and especially sort of those goofy, fun, character driven comedies. They really don't exist anymore at all. And, I, um, and I, I think that's kind of a shame because, you know, I think there's a there's a need for all around laughter. You know what I'm saying? Like no nonsense, sort of like take no prisoners laughter. It really is a thing that helps the world heal. And you could see in this world how things have gotten more divisive and more divisive and sort of people becoming unfunny. You know what I mean? They're just becoming right. like, you know, they're not happy people. And in order to create happy humans, you got to laugh. You got to add laughter into that equation. And I believe that I, I don't think it's a mistake that these comedies are not being sort of put out there. I almost think maybe there's a, a control factor involved where they want people to not be happy. You know what I mean? So right. I don't know. I can't speak to that. All I know is that I'm just glad I got in at the end of it. And because my childhood in the early seventies was all about wanting to be in those types of movies. And you guys have one of the greatest ones up there. The, the McKenzie brothers, that's that movie. Strange brew is a Canadian based movie. You know what I mean? From the second yeah. city, Toronto, the McKenzie brothers, I just watched that the other day and it's still one of the funniest fucking movies out there. I love that movie. I love that type of humor. So scary movie work. And I remember in the eighties prior to in living color, um, you know, the, uh, I'm going to get you sucker and, um, the Hollywood hustle shuffle, whatever it was called. Like, uh, the, especially I'm going to get you sucker was like one of my favorite, I, that one blew me away. So I definitely wanted to work with Keenan. And when I saw in living color, I wanted to work with Keenan. So it definitely lined up. It's pretty special on top of the fact that I had a great time shooting it. Like you're saying, I've gone and made nine more movies with the Wayans. So our new, our latest one is on Netflix. If anybody wants to check it out, it's called uh, the curse of bridge hollow. And it's uh, sort of a family friendly affair, but it's still pretty funny. And um, it's about when uh, 
the Halloween lawn decorations come alive and start to uh, try to, you know, they basically terrorize the trick-or-treaters and the parents have to get involved and fight off these Halloween decorations that are now alive and, and find out what brought them to life, this curse. And they have to basically reverse the curse. You know what I mean? So it's right. a lot of fun. Yeah. Sounds good. I'm definitely have to check that out for sure. Absolutely. And, you know, what was so cool about scary movie, they could have easily went the scream route, but and then, yeah. and then they threw you in as the twist at the end. That was pretty cool. Absolutely. Yeah. It was kind of the um, usual suspects twist, you know, and I wouldn't have done the movie if I was just doofy straight. I would not have done I think because they offered it to me and it was based on a character that I had called Chip. Uh, I made two short films. They saw those short films. They said, we'd love to have you in this film um, playing that character, Chip, as Doofy. And so I read the script. I saw that I was the killer. I said, I'll, I'll do it as long as I'm also in the mask and doing that voice of that killer, of the ghost face. And I know I could bring a lot of physical humor and comedy to that. And they agreed knowing that they weren't going to pay me anymore. So they were like, hey, you want to do this? I'm not going to pay you? Sure. Um, but I think that was definitely worth me doing because in the long run, Ghostface also went on to be so popular, you know. So I believe yeah. that the actual fact that Ghostface is so popular is really what also lent the fact that Doofy had such staying power and Scary Movie had such staying power was that, you know, now look, they just released two new Scream movies and you know, last couple of years. So that also is anything connected to Scream, which Scary Movie is, also yeah. gets a new life, you know? So that's awesome. And what were some of your favorite scenes that you were you did as Doofy? Um, look, every scene is precious, man. I love shooting. I just like acting. But I, I mean, obviously, I think the end where I'm transforming from Doofy to the regular killer and the reveal of that I'm not what meets the eye I do think that's a shocking, even for that comedy, you know what I mean? For right. stupid comedy, that ending is really, you know, better than a lot of other endings in films. So it's pretty cool. So, yep. And you're the one that got away. So I'm the that. only ghost face to ever get away. I think I'm like that's 26 right. and oh, I actually yeah. killed like 26 people in that movie. You don't think so, but I'm pretty brutal because I take out like 11 people at the party. That like doubles my kill count right there. Just at that rat when I'm rapping and smoking the weed. <laughs> yeah, like, for sure. That was one of my favorite funny scenes everyone used. That was a good one too because I loved improvising. You know, they cut my mouth out in the mask. I have a fabric mouth, which is why that ghost face mask looks different. I actually have it over here. And um, you want me to get it? Sure, for sure. I'll show you how it's a, a thing. Might take a little bit of digging out. I know I can find it. It's all good. I know it's here. Damn it. Yay. <laughs> yeah. See, a lot of people don't know that. So this was the ghost face mask that I wore. And you could see, if you look closely at that mouth, that it's fabric. Because, and I'll put my finger, see if I can oh, see wow. the See the finger how I can, well, I don't know how to run this thing there. You see that? Yeah. Yeah. I see it. So they, they couldn't hear me when I had this mask on and it was plastic. The whole thing was vinyl. They couldn't hear me. And, and so like, you got to imagine that mouth was actually long. It was, wow. It's so weird doing this thing backwards. Okay. <laughs> if I, so like my mouth was like that before, right? right. Which was more like the scream mask. And when we cut the support out, it widened out. And then when I put it on and I tie it, it stretches out even more. You know what I mean? Because right. I would tie the mask so it would stretch out. So it really made its own its own um, version. So this mask is 23 years old, man. There's still blood on it and stuff, too. It's pretty wow. cool. Wow. That's pretty they cool. They got blood splatters. And so anyway, that's because I did the voice live. And Keenan and those guys couldn't hear me because Doofy's like, you know, Chip, don't you scare me when I'm cleaning my room. But the ghost face is more like, I'm in the house. Do you know where I am? You know, and he's really low like that. Like, I've got you like a fish. <laughs> Especially, I see your feet. Yeah. Oh, shit. <laughs> ah, shit. Hold on. Wait, wait, wait. One more time. One more time. <laughs> now do you know where I am? <laughs> and then chase her up those long ass stairs and throws the piano yeah. down there. 
Yeah, that that's awesome. And of course, you had to switch masks, you know, from the tongue mask to the stoner yes. mask, which was just funny. I know. I love all of them. <laughs> yeah. So, and so later on, you got to do, you got to play more another cop type character and being directed by Rob Z- Zombie and um, Devil's Rejects. What, yep. what was that experience like working with Rob and doing that kind of type of film? Uh, yeah, it was pretty cool. Uh, I didn't really know what I was getting into. That's for sure. Because I was, when you shoot a movie and especially my character wasn't around all those scenes. And so I didn't have any idea how brutal that was going to be. Cause don't forget, I kind of knew it was like a sequel or a prequel to house of a thousand corpses. And I watched that movie and that was nowhere near like the sort of like, Peck and Paul brutality of what the devil's rejects took it up to at, you know, the level and the seriousness and the grittiness. And that's, you know, when, when Rob made house of a thousand corpses, he had a lot of um, controllers from the major studio, universal studios, kind of like manipulating his view. And so that's why he set off to do the um, devil's rejects independently so that he could sort of make a horror movie, how he wanted to, you know, first envisioned it. So I thought it was pretty cool. At the end of the day, he can go make 13 movies, uh, you know, but nothing's ever going to top The Devil's Rejects for a couple reasons. One is it really is Rob Zombie's first film with his voice, his way, you know, because he'll say House of a Thousand Corpses was made by a studio and he made a lot of changes and, made a lot of, uh, uh, you know, um, what's the word? He basically uh, negotiated down, you know, his own viewpoints. And so um, this was a movie his way. And, and And I also didn't realize until the movie came out how amazing the cast was. I knew we had a great cast, but I didn't know everybody in the film because I wasn't privy to everybody that was going to be in that film until you see it. And that's an iconic... You know, it's really one of the first horror movies out. Now a lot of horror movies do it, but th- that was the first one that just had like the who's who of horror icons. You right. Know? That was an all-star baseball team. <laughs> oh yeah, because the dream you know, you team. Had, yeah, because you had Sid Haig and yeah. Bill Mosley. Right. And of course, Kane was doing the stunts. Yeah. Kane film. Hotter. Yeah. Michael Berriman, uh, Ken Foray. It was just it's Diamond so Dallas Payne. Yeah. Trejo. Yep. Danny Trejo, right? Steve Rails back. A lot of people know that he's in it. That's pretty, he's amazing. And that's pretty cool because because that definitely is still his. I think his best film to date. Because it, it de- I definitely agree with you, Dave. Because it's definitely his voice. He wanted to make it. I definitely agree with that because because he you know, on Halloween he it was more studio, right? Studio, and then of course. Even though he did thirty one and all that stuff, with, and then Free from Hell, I still think that was Rejects is his best film because, you know, he didn't. He, the sequel could have, you know, easily just copied the original. It took it. It took it a totally different direction, and it feels like right. a totally different film. So that's yeah, that's a lot of genius about. It. And the ending was perfect. So. Yeah. So, and for and for you, I love that you almost play a almost similar. For a character in um, Victor Crowley as Dylan, yeah, you had a, that was a, awesome to see you just tackle him in the yeah. into the airplane thing. That was hilarious. I know. And, and what was it like bringing that character to life and working with Adam Green and all those amazing people? That might have been the easiest character I've ever played because Adam really wrote that for me and he wrote it with my voice because him and I, you know, we were friends for years and we'd hang out so. He really knew my energy and my voice. And when I, he said, I wrote this for you. And I read the first few pages. And I go, you're right. That's so me. So if anybody wants to know what it's like to be hang out with Dave Sheridan on his own, I'm pretty much Dylan. I really am a lot like Dylan kind of, I'm, a, I'm sweet. I'm a little bit of a dickhead and I'm a <laughs> jackass and at the all at the same time. And, um, but I'm loyal and I'm a good friend and I'm a kind of guy that would probably do that in real life. Uh, unfortunately, would I probably kill myself <laughs> into a, a jet engine? I wouldn't quite think it through. Uh, but I do like that. You know, you, he's the last one you would suspect would be the last guy standing and and take out Victor Crowley. When you start watching that movie, it's the last one you're thinking like, oh, he's gonna be the hero. You know, it's so I love the twist in that movie. 
Yeah, it was so good. I thought his character's gonna go, and then I'm like, wait a yeah. minute, he's the one that just <laughs> tackles him and then ends it. Yeah, that was the thing. He's like, you think I'm gonna die here? Oh, he's gonna die here. Oh, he's gonna die here. It's like you, you almost the way he comes on screen, you're like, oh, I can't wait to see how this guy dies. Adam's gonna have a fun time killing this guy, and that was the whole point of what he wanted to create was. Oh, here comes this jackass. He's going to be one of the first guys to die. Nope, he's still alive. He's hanging in there. Next thing you know, he makes a heroic move at the end, you know? So, yeah. And then, of course, the beginning of it, too, was, was almost like back to the comedy, what Scare Movie was doing at the beginning with the couple. Yep. <laughs> with the crazy stuff coming out. Yeah. I was like, I was like, yeah, that's, I haven't seen that in a movie in a long time. It's oh my god! Like, yeah, yeah. When she's snotting and crying and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah, it's great. That's a great scene. Jonah Ray, Jonah Ray's in, in that scene with Tyler Maine. Which you don't like. You don't see that much in comedy anymore because people don't want to are scared to push the boundaries these days. Right. You know? Yeah, yeah. I agree. Definitely. Um. So when you finally got to, to do conventions, what was it like meeting the fans for the first time and and, and doing bringing Doofy to the conventions? I really enjoyed doing it. I just got done uh, doing a day at Texas Frightmare. It was a lot of fun. But one of my favorite moments was, here I got a picture. Of, uh, as Doofy, I got to meet these crazy monkey fans. And we monkeyed around a little bit. They're so much fun. <laughs> <laughs> they attacked my vacuum. Um, oh. But uh, I have a great time interacting. It's definitely good. It fills the spirit a little bit because, you know, you as a performer, you get definitely you get depressed you know, you go into your own anxiety and depression of you're not doing enough or your career didn't go the right way and stuff like that. But then you meet some fans and, and you meet some special ones that give you certain stories of how you got them through some really hard times. And I've, I've had my share of stories like that. And a lot of the other actors get that every weekend, um, sort of tear jerker type stuff. And, but I love, you know, the fact that I could see, some comedy of what I do, how it affected other people in a positive way. So I'm, I'm not a complete loser, you know? So right. it's nuts. Yeah. What's up, Cody? How are you doing? Mr. Sheridan, folks. You don't have to call me Mr. Sheridan. And just don't call me at all, please. <laughs> so um, if anyone's got questions for Dave as well, you can definitely allow, you can definitely ask in the chat. So, um, Brother Fluff says, when we met Dave, he said he used to live close to Dave Arquette. I always thought right. that was cool. I Not only did I live close, I, no, I was his next door neighbor. Oh, wow. Yep. What was it like Gower. meeting him? What was it like meeting on, him? On Gower Boulevard on Gower off of Lancashire and uh, Melrose, just south of Melrose. I lived next to his family home. He didn't live there at the time. His, uh, his sister, Alexis, was probably the only... Uh, you know, sibling actually living at the house with his mom. Yeah. So, well, so what was it like meeting him since you had to do a parody of his character? Uh, at first, the first time I met him was after I did the parody. And he was, uh, he was a little cold. He was like, I, I went up to say who I am. I go, hey, I'm David. And he goes, uh-huh, uh-huh. I know who you are. I know who you are. And I, that the first time I actually met him was at his own film called Tripper. If you haven't seen Tripper, I, I highly recommend seeing it. It's a pretty cool uh, sort of lost horror movie that I don't hear much about. Um, but it's uh, it takes place in 1980, uh, maybe 1982. Uh, and it's like this Ronald Reagan character is the killer. And it's it's pretty cool. And um, Paul Rubens is in it. And a lot of other actors. I think Tom Thomas Jane is in it. And it, David Arquette directed it, wrote and directed it. And... Uh, I met him at the premiere of that and that's, we did a red carpet picture and he did not want to be with me, you know, but since then, I think he's, um, he's become a little like warmer hearted. I think he's a little tired of being mistaken for doofy. People call him doofy all the time. So and they call me Dewey all the time. So I think that's, I don't mind, but I, he gets upset and, uh, I wouldn't mind. Uh, I think we want to wrestle each other. I want to wrestle him. I do wrestling. He does wrestling. And I think if I wrestled as Doofy and he wrestled as do Dewey, and <laughs> but I had to close him out with my closer move with the, the vacuum cleaner. You know what I mean? Wrap yeah. Something like that. Definitely would win. <laughs> yeah. And then having Ghostface be the ref. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Not bad. Yeah. Yeah. And I think the, I think you could have Shorty, you know, nouns. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. Shorty be my manager. <laughs> <laughs> Throwing fake shit in there. Yeah. Hey, what's up, Philip? Hello, Philip. Man. And of course, Philip says one of the scenes she remembers you when you doofy with the vacuum. Oh, it's kind of an unforgettable scene, that's for sure. Don't disturb me, man. Cleaning my room. And of course, the cred scenes you get after that. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that was enjoyable. <laughs> Uh, so so Rosie's got a question for you. Dave, was it hard to keep your lips on Doofy Mole throughout the shoot? It More my eyes. You know, that's why I wear glasses more because Doofy had like a little lazy eye and stuff like that. It was definitely, it was hard. It was hard to walk around, you know, I had to walk around. But once I got into him, I, I, I tend to like to stay into my characters. So I really committed and it was uh, it was a lot of fun. I would say it's more like hard to get out of him than hard to get it, stay in him, you know? Yeah. Awesome. Um, then you got to play like Sheriff Wilmore in um David Keir's uh Bloody Summer Camp. That's right. I loved the, that film, it came out really good. I really enjoyed it because I was the one of the lucky ones to get a Blu ray. So and nice, I, and I enjoyed your character, I enjoyed the whole film. It was like that classic summer camp, and of course, the classic comedy again. Yeah, yeah. And what was that experience that like playing that sheriff role and then working with Ro Felissa Rose again? and all those other awesome people. Well, Felissa Rose and I have done 37 movies together. Um, but our first one was that Victor Crowley movie. And uh, Bloody Summer Camp was probably number six out of at that of those things, maybe at that point, maybe a little bit more, maybe 10. Uh, I loved it. Dave, when I do these small independent movies, they really let me just kind of do my thing. You know what I'm saying? I wouldn't, I, honestly, I don't agree to do movies at a lower level unless they're going to let me just do what I want to do. Uh, not saying that in a selfish way, but I actually think I do my best work when I'm free and sort of to create my characters and uh, sort of just let improv out the dialogue, the way I kind of see it coming and hear it in my head and just be free. And so, you know, most directors are very happy with the result and in bloody summer camp was one of them. If you like that film, I really was just kind of given the reins to just let go and do what I want. So I'm looking for my soda. Think of a question while I grab my soda. Where the hell is it? Hold on. All right. I'm a nut bag. How's everyone doing in the chat so far? Enjoying? Hope you're having a guys having a good day. This is awesome having Dave here. Just letting know everyone know that um, June seventeenth is when we'll, uh, my next interview will be for, um, Lisa Wilcox, who played Alice in Nightmare on Elm Street four and five. So I'm doing good, man and Andrew. Thank you for your asking. I'm doing very well. I'm definitely. Ha it's been an awesome May. I can't believe we're almost in June. It's gonna be an awesome month. I got a stacked month for amazing content coming up for you guys so <coughs> and so i don't know where it went i was thirsty i was thirsty i don't know i had it with me somewhere but um what you get with dave sheridan folks so dave sheridan podcast so what was it like you know doing a different type of spoof with haunted hellas when it had to do more of uh the paranormal activity stuff what was it like doing that changing it up I, that was a great one because that was a what would be considered an ultra low budget, but a studio movie. That movie was completely improvised. We improvised that movie just like, you know, we knew where the scenes were supposed to go, but we just kind of made it all up as we went dialogue wise. And, um, you know, again, that was another Wayne's Brothers movie. And I just had a blast doing it. And we had a great cast. So and I was I was in Haunted House 1 and Haunted House 2. In Haunted House 1, I played the ghost, one of the ghost guys. And we're one of the ghost hunter guys that put up the security cameras and stuff like that. And then in Haunted House 2, I'm actually the ghost. I'm actually uh, the, the from Sinister, the, the Bagul character from Sinister. So it's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. And, of course, you got to work with Marlin again, which yep. is, a lot, is probably always a lot of fun. What What's one comedy and horror film that you would love to do that you haven't done yet? 
a comedy or horror film or any type of movie for that matter well i mean on the bucket list any type of movie i, I want to get a western done and i want to get a war movie done because i did i did an astronaut space movie i've done comedies i've done lots of cops and robbers so you know just to hit that sort of like john wayne old school movie genres i definitely need you know a western and i need uh, a war movie and then at least I'll have sort of my wall of completion. You know, I've done, I've done comedies, I've done dramas and capers and stuff. But I think if there's, say, a franchise that I'd like to sort of like reboot or be a part of, I'd love to have something to do with like uh, Night Stalker or the Kolchak series. I would love to like play that lead character in some sort of film or uh, get an opportunity to maybe be Freddy Krueger you know and bring a bring a new sort of sort of uh sort of i wouldn't say comedy but make him a little more sadistic and fun even though he already was but i think uh freddy krueger would fit me well in my performance space but if i look at like the main themes you know what i mean like the jasons the michael myers and freddy's uh the you know i already have ghostface so i already did that but like chucky's or Texas, you know, leather face. If you look at the fiends, I think that Freddy Krueger fits me more than say a Jason or they don't even talk. You know what I mean? So um, that would be a good one. I also think Beetlejuice, you know, taking it the opposite way, like going a darker Beetlejuice, like what got him sent to hell in the first place? You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. What turned him into what he is? What kind of bad you know, sort of decisions did he make to end up in sort of that purgatory hell, you know? Yeah, for sure. That would be awesome to do since they're dealing Beetlejuice 2. Love to see yeah. that kind of direction. Now, how could they have not done more Beetlejuice yet? That's a universe they haven't tackled. And I think the same thing with, uh, I think they live. I just saw John Carpenter this weekend, hung out with him. I asked him a couple questions. I couldn't ask him too many. Uh, so I certainly wasn't going to get into they live. I know that they must be doing something with they live. But they're missing the boat if they don't act soon because I think there could be a great TV series because They Live is so quintessentially ripe for today's technology. And, you know, it's sort of like caught up. It's almost believable. You know what I mean? The conspiracy theories are not too far off of what is going on in They Live anyway, you know? So. And They Live is, I think, it, that's one of my favorite John Carpenter films. And I think it's so ahead of its time. It's so darn great. And that I love the brawl between Roy Piper and Keith David. It's just amazing. Oh, yeah. In the alleyway. Exactly. Yeah. And of course, his line here, here to kick ass and chew bubblegum. I'm out of bubble. I'm out of bubblegum. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You, sh you should have been you. You just did it so well. Man, you nailed it. <laughs> yeah. And. And for you, I would love to see Freddy Krueger now because I think it's time to bring back Nightmare on Elm Street. It's been so long since we got a movie, and Rob right. England said he can't do it anymore. So I love to, that. Would be cool to see you do it. I should rest. watch the latest one, the one where the uh, Jackie Earl Haley played him. I don't. I don't know how that one was. I don't. You know. See um, it. I will say I thought his performance was amazing. Just the makeup they could have did a little, little bit better. Just my Good. opinion. Was it was, was that Freddy versus Jason? Or was that another? Was that another? Oh, the nightmare? Uh, the, the Robert England was the the newer one was just a remake in twenty. Got it. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. But um, but Freddy versus Jason though, I think Robert England went out with a bang as Freddy. Good, <laughs> so, good, good. So, and and Rosie said they most of your comedy performance are Im improvised. That's Which right. Is, and that's why they're so darn good. I don't know if that's why they're so good, but, but it's at least that's why they get finished because see, I, I have dyslexia and I, I, I have like a fourth grade reading level. So uh, even when these questions come in, I really can't probably read them if they're a simple little line. So the improvising comes from the, the fact that I'm not a very good reader. And I, I certainly, by not being a good reader, I probably can't get the lines right anyway. So I just kind of, kind of understand where they're going to go or what the character is and usually want to bring, I'm usually know that I have funny lines that I can bring out, you know, so. Right. And, but it's probably more, it's probably a lot more fun for you too, when you get to just do whatever you want and 
it's yeah. a lot less stress because trying to memorize lines that I can't even read are, are would be is hard. You know what I mean? So it's right. a good way to hide behind the fact that I'm illiterate. <laughs> and if if <laughs> if you were able to, would you ever want to do like voice acting for video games or? Oh yeah, an animated. I, yeah, I would definitely do that. It's a lot of work. People might think that's easy, especially video games. I went in. There was a game, and it was a game show game. It was called You Don't Know Jack. They hired me for that. And um, <laughs> I went in the first day, and it was a book. It was like 1,500 pages of stuff they wanted me to record. And I told you that I have dyslexia. I can't read. I sort of stutter when I read, and I'm very, like, one line. You know, I, I think it's called tunnel vision reading. Like we're here, it says, uh, you're in the show. Everyone can see and hear yeah. you. But I, I read out loud, like you're in the show. Everyone can see and hear you. So it would take a long time. Um, keep an eye on that question right there. And um, yeah. so basically I, I, I quit. It was, you don't know, Jack, we took a little bit and I said, Oh, can I, I you know what? I left my, I left something out in my car. Can I go out in my car? And I went out. And I just got in my car and left. Like, uh, this is because they were paying me a, a flat fee to do the voiceover. And I was like, I'm going to be here for at least two weeks. And this, it's not worth the $500 I'm getting for two weeks of pain. So, um, but I would love to do now video games have begun so big. So, especially they have, you know, the, the Friday 13th games and Texas, you know, Texas Chainsaw Massacre games and stuff. So, it would be cool to be a voice in that, you know what I mean? Right, yeah, and I just was one of the lucky ones that got to do the techno test for Texas Chainsaw, so I counted yeah. for August. I think Gun nailed it out of the park for that one. Oh my god, awesome, it's I can't wait too. And That's it's cool. so cool now, I never thought our favorite horror would, would, would come to video games. It's just right. so cool now to see that. Yeah. And play the characters. So, so Cody so, had a question here. Yeah, so Cody's asking, Dave, what was your introduction to horror? My babysitter. Yeah, my babysitter was horrific. <laughs> just, oh, I don't know if you mean horror movies or just horror in life. Uh, I, I did get tortured as a baby. My babysitter would put me in the dryer and like toss me around in the dryer. So that was that's pretty scary. And I, I remember that. It's definitely why I have claustrophobia. Um, I would think my my first horror film if you want to call it a horror film was jaws in 1976 i think is when it came out that's the first one i probably really saw in the movie theaters and because i went down to set in 1974 75 um i went to school in woods hole massachusetts which was near martha's vineyard and my dad was a marine biologist at woods hole and they were working on Bruce the shark off the docks and he brought me down and he said, check out the shark. And I thought it was a real shark. He's like, no, they're making a movie. So I got to see Bruce the shark right there when I was in kindergarten live. And then he took me to the movie theater. Go, remember that shark you saw? Well, here's the, here it is in the movie. This is the movie. Right. It's called Jaws. So um, a lot of that kind of stuff that happened to me as a kid, something like early on like that as in kindergarten um, really like close the separation of oh the idea of even becoming doing in, being in the business of making movies or television it really closed the gap when i was able at kindergarten to go down and see jaws get made i didn't understand how sort of rare that was that i was led into that kind of world you know what i mean i, I just thought that was like oh here's where they make movies okay and then my kindergarten teacher at that time said uh you used to say what you were going to become and everybody would say cop or a fireman or something like that. And I said, uh, an astronaut, because this was like 1973, 74, 75. In that period, um, you know, NASA and Tang was really big. I would drink Tang all the time. And uh, but NASA was big. The astronaut was was big deal, you know. And so I said, I want to be an astronaut. And she said, you're never going to be an astronaut. You don't have what it takes to be an astronaut. But. If you become an actor, you can play an astronaut in a movie or a TV show. And I said, all right, okay, I'll just be an actor then. She goes, okay, yeah, I can see you being an actor. So, so, <laughs> and then that's why I did, I did, a, I did a movie. If anybody wants to check it out, it's a pretty good little horror movie. It's like, it's, 
it's called White Space, and it's like Moby Dick meets The Shining set in space. You know what I mean? It's a cabin fever sort of set in space, and uh, you should check it out. That's all. I'm not going to give it away, but it gets the second half takes a turn, and it's pretty pretty interesting in the second half of the movie. And I was really proud to be a part of that that movie, and not a lot of people know about. But we worked on it, and it came out really good for a low budget movie. And um, and I got to be an astronaut, and I got to float in space. So I remember sitting there floating in space, which I'm not really floating in space. It's just they they had me on a harness on a green screen. Oh, okay. and the, they're, I'm completely weighted, but the weight is all now in my balls because it's this harness that's just hoisting you up by your crotch. And I just remember sitting in there pretending to be floating and being like, I fucking made it, Mrs. Hammond. I fucking made it. But still, at the same time, my balls were hurting. I go, oh, I didn't know it was going to be this way, you know. It was almost like she was torturing me at the same time. Yeah, you made it, but I'm gonna make. I'm gonna remind you that you're not really in space because I'm right. ripping your balls tight. You know, so right, yeah. And would you ever do like horror television, like American Horror Story, if Ryan Murphy ever asked you? Absolutely, I love that show. I love that show. Yeah, it's such a good show because I think it's one of the best anthology shows because yeah, it's every season is a different show, but sometimes it's mostly the same cast playing different characters, which I think they're talented people. I know that would be a good show for me to do that. If they ever need another person that plays a lot of characters <laughs> for sure. And, um, yeah, Cody says I did that too. Dave, the driver when I was nine. Yeah. That's, that's why Cody's here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and may I says you should make a movie about that said babysitter. I know. Maybe. That's not a bad idea. <laughs> the days before nanny caps. <laughs> now, like I know, I knew, I knew this. I knew the chat was going to let it loose. They're awesome people. So, uh, thank you guys. <laughs> they make the fun. They make the they make the chat fun. They're awesome people. Um, but I was going to say, what what young actor or director that's so popular right now that you would love to work with, especially like horror last year. Uh. Well, you know, I've already worked with uh, Damien Leone in a movie called Stream that's coming out, but he also did the uh, Terrifier 1 and Terrifier 2. So I was with him this weekend, and I, the movie I did, Stream, he just did the special effects. He killed me, but he, and I, oh, I just gave it away, spoiler alert, anyway. But uh, I, I was, it's definitely a little feather in my cap to be killed by Damien, Damien Leone. Um but I, I did see him this weekend, and I know they're going to get ready, gearing up to shoot uh, Terrifier 3 in the fall. So I would love to maybe have an opportunity to be in that, you know. So you never know. You never know. That would be cool because I think they're doing a phenomenal job with Terrifier. I, I think he's old? a great team. It's a great team, and he's a good, he's a great fresh voice on, on horror. For sure, and I love that he sticks to, he loves doing practical effects, which I think that's what you need to do for horror when it right. comes to those kind of stuff. And yep. it's it's I'm, what it did for independent filmmaking and indie films is just phenomenal because it he was just sat on Terrifier too and and Felicia Rose was in that for a little appearance so that was she cool. was she was I've got my saying what's up from Ghostface but her Miss Principe in there was like what's going on so I'm like are you really gonna bite you now you're taking my, my slogans you know what I mean if she's got a vacuum in the next one I'm gonna get <laughs> I think now she's just. <laughs> That's cool though, because you know, Felicia is awesome, and I love her. And you know, like, um, Sleepaway Camp, ever since I seen her in that, and then which was another phenomenal twist. So, you mm. both had both you both had twists. So, what would your what would it, what would you want to see in a movie that hasn't done it yet? What was a movie that you would love to see that no one has ever done? What would your original idea would be? An original idea of a movie that's never been done, yeah. Oh, gosh. Uh, that's hard to say because I, I really think a lot of movies have been done. So if I have that idea, then a lot of people would want that idea, you know? Right. Um, so I don't know. I'd have to go back and look at my scripts and look at my, my notes and stuff like that. I have an idea. I'll throw this out there because I don't think it's ever going to get made. So if somebody wants to go steal this idea. But um, I'd like to do something where the guy has to kill in order to stay alive and his killings keep getting more and more, you know what I mean? But it's, he's 
only way that he's able to stay alive is by keeping his adrenaline up. You know what I mean? To, to right. get, Otherwise, he's terminally ill. But then he finds out by keeping his adrenaline up, it actually keeps him strong and is curing his cancer and curing his terminal illness. But he has to keep killing in more abrupt ways because his adrenaline level has to he's getting used to killing so now he has to bump up the killing to, to get that adrenaline back you know what i mean yeah for sure and is there anything allowed you you're allowed to talk about stream that david Leone's directing yeah so damien leone did not direct that one damien leone only did the special effects oh, the okay. directors of that movie were the producers of terrifier one and two this uh, guy michael levy and michael levy was the producer on the terrifier movies is now the director they really are a team of they share, they move around. They're just, they're all they're doing is swapping hats. And um, it's sort of their uh, devil's rejects of the terrifier kind of type of world. Uh, David Howard Thornton returns as a killer, but there's three other killers in the movie stars, myself, uh, Danielle Harris, D Wallace, Jeffrey Combs, Tony Todd, Tim Curry, Bill Mosley, Oh, wow. Daniel Roebuck, Felissa Rose, my co-star in so many movies, and um, and maybe a, a, a little bit more. There's some other surprises in there, but that cast alone is pretty phenomenal in terms of a, a horror cast. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's the legends in there. Yeah, I can't wait for it to come out. I think it's going to be this fall. Stream. Oh, okay. Do you know where it's going to be showed? So people can find it. I would most likely think that they're going to follow suit and probably have it released on stream screen box. Is that what it's called? Screen box. Yeah. yeah. Wherever they put out the terrifier too, I would imagine it's going to fall in that same deal and that same structure. Awesome. Definitely going to check that out. Yeah, please do. You might be able to look on there now, stream trailer or stream teaser or something like that. I'm sure there's something out there. <laughs> what's up two boys and scary pops he said we need a chronicles of doofy and youtube shorts from a day with doofy lol yeah that'd be awesome would be rosie's take Ooh, that sounds like a good hotel nanny cam found footage movie wow uh, <laughs> yeah 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 nanny cam and like um those amazon cameras and stuff like that you know the lady i can't say her name because i have one in my room right now mm, the a lady something oh, like did. that well, that's cool and what's so what's so how has it been good for you to go transfer from acting to doing comedian work like stand-up i don't do stand-up oh you don't no but so stay here stay here i'm gonna go try it <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. it sucked. It sucked kyle yeah, it sucked. Should never asked. No. I should. <laughs> I you know. Like I, I, I could probably go out with Jamie Kennedy or, or even Marlon. I, I probably, uh, you know, I early on Adam Sandler and Chris Rock took me out when I was like 18 years old, and I didn't know what I was doing, and that's when Chris Farley kind of, sort of, he kind of took me under his wing and got me over to Second City in Chicago because I was doing more character work and stuff like that, and he said, "You, it seems like you'd be a more." a better fit in second city in Chicago. So, but now that I have sort of like, I'm at a point in my career where I'm a little more mature and I have more sort of a basis of where to pull some comedy from in, in conversation points. Like I have kids and multiple wives and stuff like that. So um, maybe I could do stand up now. That would be interesting. You know, I'd like to do it. I'd like to try it. Awesome. If anybody wants to see me do stand up for the first time, I'm going to do it at a festival called Hazard Fest, October weekend of October 7th in Newport, Tennessee. Just look up Hazard Fest. It's like a Dukes of Hazard Fest. And I and they they they're bringing me and they said, "Do you do stand up comedy?" And I said, "I do." I've never done it. <laughs> and so that's going to be my premiere. I'm going to perform there. Cool. That'd be awesome, you know, because you're an awesome dude and very funny, and you're very talented. So it's been, it's so cool that you came on today. This has been a blast for sure. Yeah, I apologize for last week. Were you sitting up? Were you sitting live last week with no one here? 
Yeah. Motherfucker! That, Fuck that Sheridan! Fuck him! That's okay. I, I understood. It was no worries. I knew it was fine. Didn't, didn't bother me at all. I would I never knew. blow you off a second time. I don't even remember what happened. What happened on the first one? Something happened. I was working, right? Was that on a Sunday? Yeah, you said you had a. You said it, you had um some type of reshoots for a movie, yeah. a TV show. Crust, I think. Crust, Crust. yeah, yeah. Which I think it was fine. a Sunday. I think you wanted me on on a Sunday, or was it a Tuesday? Was it another Tuesday? I think it was one of those two days. Either anyway, I think it was yeah. a Saturday. I think. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah. Sorry about that. That's okay. No worries. I understood. Things come up. But we were able to get you on today, so that's yes. the main thing. I love it. What's up, Tommy Knocker, the horror guy? He says, hey, Flat, hey, Dave. How do you think the Doofy would be received in today's times? Do you catch any flack for playing the character like that? Um, I can't speak for how he would be, uh, how people would respond in today's standards. Um, I don't think you're going to see anybody playing a character like Doofy in the re- in especially how deep and how sort of on point that I played him. I don't think that's ever, you're going to see that in today's, nobody's going to write a film that really has that in as a joke and also as like a twist and stuff like that. Cause they're going to get shut down prior to even getting there. And I have not received any flack. People love Doofy. Doofy's a real character in my heart. He comes from people I know in my neighborhood and, when I create my characters, I create them as three-dimensional characters, even as something okay. as goofy as Doofy. And um, I hope I'm still on because you disappeared. But um, You're still on. good. So ultimately, oh, I on, haven't camera. gotten anything. I think he's kind of grandfathered in anyway at this point. He's a meme. He's so, you know, he's become so sort of like essential to society in a weird way. He's like the new Alfred E. Newman of the 20th century. Oh, yeah, I'm not sure what happened there. The camera just went weird. <laughs> I liked it. It was great. You look, you almost look like Doofy, too, on the second one. You're like, what's going on? Yeah, I kind of had to. <laughs> <laughs> because, cause, like, yeah, because it's been, tw- I can't believe it's been 23 years for, you know, for Scary Movie, you know, and it's still right. popular as ever. And I just did, a, like, a watch party of it a week ago or so on somebody else's yep. channel. So yeah. it's still one of my favorite comedies ever. So. Right, right. Oh, um, Andrew was asking. Finally, found that tr- question. Since it's everything's being revived, would you lo- like doing like a direct sequel to Scary Movie? Bring back Doofy character <laughs> if, you, if we ever come I, back Revenge. I definitely thought of like what could be something that we do, sort of as a sort of I wouldn't call maybe not a sequel, but just a continuation. Um, but I don't necessarily know if Doofy would be in it at all versus the killer that I am. Who am I? Who is the guy that reveals that he was portraying Doofy? You know what right. I mean? Like, what other towns did he go to? And was he Fart the Clown? Was he, you know, was he Jason? Was he a, uh, you know, a Michael Myers type character? Is there other spoofs? So it doesn't really go Ghostface or Doofy. Does it go Saw? You know what I'm saying? Like, is there other spoof realms that I can go into in a series of shorts? And th- like in an anthology kind of way, but all tied together with that it's the same unknown killer guy that keeps taking on these personas, you know? Right, so because you know, like you know, like how trick or treat, all their stories come together at the end. That'll be like kind of like that scenario. Right, and at the end, like when the FBI profile or kind of like a, you know, have it sort of be something like a Silence of the Lambs, where there's this Jodie Foster character trying to hunt me down, and I escape back into the original. So she runs into Doofy and knocks over Doofy as a janitor. And she's like, get the hell out of the way, Doofy, you know, and <laughs> runs off. And then I'm like, okay. And you see me walk off and that's how I escape. Uh, this time I escape as Doofy versus me escaping as the guy that, you know, looks is the good looking guy. You know what I mean? Right. Unless you're in the woods and you had Yogi Bear after you. Hey, Dave. Yeah. <laughs> Yogi Bear and Yogi Bear, Cocaine Yogi Bear, Cocaine Yogi Bear ass coming after yeah, you. Yeah, Cocaine Yogi Bear. <laughs> <laughs> hey, boo boo, we found some cocaine. Got to hide right. it from the ranger. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, that would be something. So, um, he's asking, what was it like meeting Gary Busey? Yeah, I I love Gary Busey. I didn't. The one thing is, I forgot that he that he got into a a motorcycle accident, right? 
I, 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 after I was told about the motorcycle accident and how he had brain damage from the motorcycle accident, then all of a sudden it made all sense that it, that it, why he acts like he acts and stuff. But the first time I met Gary Busey, he came into an elevator at this convention. At first, I messed around with him as Doofy, and it's on video. You, you, he's referring to this YouTube clip of Doofy and Gary Busey, and Gary Busey has no idea who I am or who Doofy is. <laughs> and But then I was myself in an elevator at that convention and Gary Busey was coming in holding a banana and an orange and two sodas and he drops stuff and I help him pick it up and I get the floor and he, I'm now holding the muffin and the banana and he goes, he's like, well, hey, I'll bring that down to my room for me. Will you, will you help me bring that down to my room? Thanks buddy, thanks. And he, we're walking down to the room and then he opens the door and he's like, yeah, bring it in here, bring it in here. So we go into his room. I'm like, I'm going in his room now. And he's like, you yeah, just put it down there. Put put the banana down there by the nightstand. And that, that, that'd be great, Dave. Thank you, Dave. And then, um, because I tell him my name's Dave. Thank you, Dave. And then, and then he gets in bed and then he tells me to get the remote control. So I get the remote control. Now, every time I go over to him, it's like the, the big bad wolf. It's like Ro Little Red Riding. And he's like, well, uh, do me a favor. Do me a solid. And bring me that remote, will you, will you, son? Like, and then they give him the remote. And then he's like, then he wants his pills. And I'm like, what are these pills? You know what I mean? And he said they're just ibuprofen. I look at it was ibuprofen. So I thought he was <laughs> the way <laughs> the way Gary Busey acts, I thought he was on some crazy painkiller or something, right? So but it was a little weird and I finally got out of there. But I was expecting him to be like, come a little closer, will you, buddy? Come on, come on, a little closer. And they grabbed me like I gotcha. You know, but he didn't. He just told I gave him his pills and his remote and tucked him into bed and, and I left the hotel room. Wow. That was my visit with Gary Busey. <laughs> <laughs> Quite the visit too. I can see that. Yeah. We well, just answered Rosie's question. I could. I bet Dave can imitate Busey, which he just did. That so. was my invitation. Yeah. Hey, Dave. Dave, it's Gary Busey. It's Gary Busey, Dave. How you doing? Good. Gary Busey. It's Gary Busey. <laughs> Is there anybody else you can Im imitate that you have met, or you're any of your co-stars you worked with? Oh, I don't know. I don't think so. I, you know. The heck they come and go. I don't know. <laughs> I don't want to. I don't want to upset anybody. <laughs> no, he's like you made fun of me. <laughs> yeah. And you know it was so cool too that you know scare me was on a Ferris's first film. You know. Yep. Have you ever worked with her since, or met with her? Re, re, had a reunion with her since? Scare no, me? I've had lunch a couple times with her, but we've never worked together since then. Yeah, she was eighteen at the time. She's gone on to have a great career. I'm super proud and excited that you know happy for her for sure. Yeah, she has, and and we'd love to see her return to the scary movie franchise. But I think I didn't know this at the time. But one time on a on a little lunch date, and we went in, and then we went and played on the swing sets. She was it was with her roommate Chris Pratt. Like I guess they were married or something. I didn't even know that he went on to really be a really big star. And I was on the swing sets with him. I didn't even know who he was. So day in the life, day in the life. I could have been a guardian of the galaxy. <laughs> Oh, you could have been, you know. James Gunn sleeping on my couch at one point. Really? Yeah, when he first moved out to California. Yeah. Who else have you met that's so famous? All those famous people. I don't know. What do you mean? Who have I met that's famous? Oh, that's like, you know, like Al Pacino or De Niro or any of those other type of people. I went trick-or-treating twice with Arnold Schwarzenegger. That's Really? The, yeah. And once when he was the governor. Oh, wow. Yeah. What was it like meeting him, the Terminator? It was good. And I do think, you know, the, the third time he met me, I think he actually remembered me. So that's kind of neat. You know what I mean? Because uh, when you meet the famous people, you never think they actually remember you. They kind of look through you. You know what I'm right. saying? Right. Gotcha. Well, I've met our president, Joe Biden, twice. And the second time I met him, though, he definitely looked through me like he didn't. That guy is not even there. You know what I mean? He's, he, he's out He's there. definitely not there. No. no. No, he's not. No, I I saw him in person, dude. He 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 looked right through me. He was just there's nothing behind the eyeballs anymore. No, that's for sure. So hey, Carrie, Carrie says it's honor to meet Dave virtually. How was my friend Flat? How you doing, Carrie? Awesome, thank you. She wants to she wants to hear you say don't I told you not to bother me cleaning my room line. She wants to hear you say Okay, okay. I told you don't bother me while I'm cleaning my room. So don't disturb me while I'm cleaning my room. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
Especially too when you're telling those people not to run with the whistle was funny. Yeah, <laughs> eat it, slow down. They're like, "Fuck you!" I'm like, "Okay." <laughs> <laughs> then you and Hail, Hail, Gale, Hailstorm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Gale swallows. <laughs> I don't know. Does she? I don't know. It just it was so funny that you said that line in front of everyone, especially at the conference. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then of course in the police station. Smell this. <laughs> yeah. They they had me improvise that Gail Swallows line. That was one where Keenan said, just kept making up a bunch of stuff and we'll we'll see which one comes, you know, which one makes sense. So awesome. Buzzkill was a fun series. What was your one of your best pranks you pulled? Oh, good question. Um I think honestly, one of the ones I liked the best was in our very pilot episode at spring break where we we were pretending to be a spring break shuttle, but then as we were, we made the van where it didn't open from the inside. So really they were prisoners. And then we said, oh, we got to pull over and get gas. But my, the partners that were in the car, they went in and pretended to rob the 7-Eleven. They came back with a bag of money and ski masks. They're like, go, go, go. And then I think they had someone shoot like blank guns as if they were shooting at us. And we're just like, I'm just bolting out of there. And then people, now the people are frozen thinking, oh my God, we just got in a van with like people robbing the 7-Eleven. How the hell did we get out? You know what I'm saying? So that was a good one. People were climbing out the windows and all this other stuff. What was, what was your second favorite after that? Oh, uh, second favorite. Probably um, pranking, um, what's her name? Whitney Houston at the MTV Movie Awards. Because one of the guys on our team Frank, uh, Frank Hudetz, he was a, like a dead ringer for Isaac Mizrahi. So we were there backstage as Isaac Mizrahi shooting like a follow-up to his documentary that his documentary unbuttoned. We had zipped up was his, you know, documentary. And um, basically she wanted to see him and they told us like, who you can mess with anyone there, but just don't mess with Whitney Houston. But she came to us and man, we, we got a lot of trouble when we, when she found out that, you know, wasn't real, so it was kind of funny. Oh, that's awesome! So, you got that's so cool. You got to meet her before she, yeah, asked. And so, you got to be a part of um, horrible bosses, yes, I mean, the bartender, <laughs> yeah. That was a believe it or not, it was a small little scene, but again, that scene was a, a lot of work because those guys all improvised. I wasn't improvising at all because I had like two lines. But they wanted me to improvise more. And I was like, I'm going to get in trouble with the director. I'm not, the scene is not supposed to be about the bartender. I have a couple lines, you know what I mean? And they were like, they wanted me to fight them and jump over the thing. And I couldn't leave my lighting. I had a thing called key lighting behind the bar. I was lit. And I was also, I was wired into a microphone that was on the bar. And so I couldn't jump over because the, the, of the mic cable. And they were like, come on, come over here and say that to my face. I go, I can't. And they, they're almost fucking with me knowing that I couldn't jump over the bar, you know? So, Oh. <laughs> yeah, it was a lot of fun. That's awesome because too bad you weren't in the second one, unfortunately. Yeah. Been- I know. It was designed. My friends directed it. and I, They really should have brought back the character, the bartender character somehow. It'll be like home, the homeless guy or something. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, I do have to run to my next meeting. So... Are there any more questions, and then we can wrap this up? Okay, so if if so, anyone wants to ask Dave one more question before I leave, go ahead. But if if it, for sure, let us know. But I just yeah. want. To, but and for the but before that, I just want to say thank you, Dave, because this thank was an you, honor man. to meet you, Dave. And yep. hopefully, I can add to meet you in person someday. That'll be a lot of fun. Well, if I can get out to the Calgary one, is that the closest one you said, Calgary? Yeah. Yeah, I kind of agree. I, yeah, I could definitely make it work. Get down there and I can... Okay. If, you're ever, if you're ever there, I can definitely meet you there. That'd be cool. Yeah, I'd love that. For sure, because it's not far from me. Because it's... Yeah. Yep. So. so. All right. It looks like no one's got any more questions. So thank I you, guys. So, just want to say thank you, Dave. This was... I lot. appreciate it. And I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll have me back on. No. For sure. We'll definitely have you back on for... Another fun discussion or let's, something. Let's have me on after stream comes out so we can talk about that movie. For sure. I'll definitely have you back on when that comes out for sure. We'll definitely right, plan cool. something. For sure, I'll we'll talk off screen. Yeah, we'll have that. me and Felissa Rose will come on together. For sure. We'd we'll love to have you both on. 
Okay, sure. cool. Awesome. All thank right. you, Kyle. All right. Thank you, Dave, for coming on. And thank thanks, you for, everybody. Have a good night, Dave. Okay. Good night, everybody. Thank you. Uh, I'm in space. He's in space now. Wow, so that was awesome meeting Dave Sheridan. So we'll definitely have him back on when stream premieres. And and yeah, it looks like Dave's in space. <laughs> but no, he's an awesome dude. It was awesome getting a blast to talk to Dave. And thank you guys all for being here and, and uh, asking awesome questions too. And like I said, yeah, we'll definitely have Dave on back when stream comes. It looks like we we'll, we'll have Felicia Rose join us too. So that's being a blast as well. So stay tuned for that. We'll definitely have them back on with Felicia Rose for another fun interview after stream comes out. So, so I will be back Friday. We'll be doing another, Oh, what the hell? <laughs> this camera. Again, this camera just doesn't like me, but no, as I was going to say, I'll be, I'll be back Friday with another stream. Not sure what we're doing yet, but I'll be having another stream. But stay tuned for um, stay tuned for two interviews I'll be doing in June. I'll be interviewing Adam Marcus, Jason Goes to Hell director, on um, June sixteenth, and then the seventeenth will be once it's once it's official. I'll be bringing on um, uh, Lisa Wilcox who played Alice from Nightmare Down Street 4 and 5. So that's going to be a blast. And then also be having Sean Clark on for a top 10 horror scores. So that's going to be a blast. So stay tuned for all the amazing content in June, guys. I can't believe it. May is almost over and it's going to be June. So so thanks for all for watching. Thank you, Carrie. Thank you, everyone who has joined us in the chat. Hope you all have an amazing, wonderful night and an amazing rest of your Friday. And then, uh, not Friday, what the heck am I saying? It's Tuesday. Great Tuesday and a great week. See you all later. Have a good night, everyone. Cheers.